Hi, Cat's Cradle here. I had intended to make a Thanksgiving video to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, but uh, life got in the way and I just hadn't done that. So I'm hoping now that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. Prepper A was out of school on Tuesday and Wednesday we wanted to go do a little uh, shopping for our meal. But I had also been asked by a friend, a husband and wife friend of ours who owns, uh, I mean, who runs the local food pantry to stop by um, on food distribution day to see their operation and to visit and that kind of thing. And I have just put that off and not done it. But the last time I talked to them, uh, their plea was, uh, was a little more heartfelt. And they said, our problem is that when we get these uh, commodities from the big food pantry in Kansas City and really there's only one really uh, huge food pantry that services that whole metro area they said the problem is we're getting perishable commodities we're not getting canned goods or anything like that but we're getting potatoes and onions and bread and carrots and those things that they have an overabundance of they must get rid of them so they send them out to outlying communities and our problem is that we don't have enough people coming to pick them up and even after we close for the day we're having to take the leftovers and try to pawn them off on nursing homes and senior citizen sitter and that kind of thing and still we have too much and we don't want to throw it away please come and pick up a, a load of these commodities and I was real hesitant I said uh, that's gonna seem very strange for me because I have enough to take care of my family and I'm not needy it's gonna feel a little weird she said don't feel strange. No one has to qualify to pick up these perishable items. Anybody in the county who could use them or wants them is eligible to come get them. That's the only th that's the only thing they ask is that you know that you use them. So I told her we would try to do that. Well, as I got to thinking about Thanksgiving and wanting to make it meaningful for, for Prepper A, I decided that I would do just that. I'd go make a visit to the food bank. But instead of just going down and visiting or helping out, I wanted us to get a number just like everyone else who went there to get food and to get in line and to stand in line and to experience that. Uh, we are blessed with abundance in our family and I thought it might be a meaningful experience for Prepper A to see what it is like to be among those in need and so sure enough we went and we signed up and we put a, put a number on her and a number on me and we stood in line for an hour and a half and we visited and we talked and we observed and uh, learned some powerful lessons. I won't share all those with you now. Uh, some, of them, some of them still feel a little raw and personal to me, but suffice it to say, it's a day I won't ever forget. And I told Prepper A on the way home that she won't ever forget it either. Uh, there are some things in my childhood that are attached to um, uh, emotion, intense emotion and I can remember them very vividly and I told her I said you may live to be a very old woman but you will never forget the day that you stood in the food line and uh, I hope she doesn't so uh, enough of that what I'm really here to talk to you about today is a video a YouTube video you can watch it on YouTube uh, that's titled David versus Monsanto and it's not really David at all it's uh, Percy Schmeiser and I have a few people in my life who are real heroes and this is one of them he's a Canadian he lives in Saskatchewan and he raises canola this video was made back in 1999 in 1996 was when uh, GM canola came on the market and one of Percy's neighbors was growing it and Monsanto uh, genetically modified canola drifted over into his field and Monsanto snuck on his property and took some of the GMO and tested it and found out that it was theirs and that he had not paid for it and was growing it on his field and sent him a notice telling him that that canola crop was theirs and that uh, it was their right to have it and to harvest it and that he owed them for it. Anyway, 
many lawsuits ensued, uh, went through the lower courts, and eventually wound up in the Canadian Supreme Court, where Percy Smyser lost, and the court upheld that GMO absolutely owned the patent for that, and that if he hadn't paid for it, then it was technically stolen, and Monsanto had the right to it. Now, the great thing is, Monsanto... Uh, was suing him for a million dollars, which they did not end up getting. The court upheld that he didn't have to pay that. And Monsanto also did not get his property, his vehicles, his land, his house, which they were trying to get. Uh, and there were feather suits that came about. But you need to know how this lone man and his little wife fought this corporate, corporate giant and continued to fight and to speak out for the rights of of uh, biodiversity and uh, they speak out for farmers rights as well he speaks all over the world he is a hero in Germany where they have given him a very prestigious award and uh, you can learn more about him if you just google Percy Schmeiser in fact if you put in Percy and as soon as you type this S for Schmeiser four names will appear and his will be one of them uh, I hope you watch this video and that it moves you like it moved me. What I hope you take away is that the cat is out of the bag. There is no setting this straight. I get emails all the time, people saying, well, if we just quit growing GMO now, maybe, maybe, we, can, maybe we can fix our food supply. There will be no fixing it. GM is here. We cannot gather it back up again and, and lock it up as if it had never been as if it had never been distributed um, I am an optimist though and will uh, continue to encourage you to grow your own food as much as you can and I'll be interested to see what you think after you watch this video let me know that's all for now this is Cat's Cradle